Okay, Gary Cohn joins us, former National Economic Council director, former Goldman Sachs president here at Post 9. My Fed buddy used to do a Fed show together, so now we do the Fed <laughs> real show, which is how we should all react now that you've had a night to think about it. What do you think? So I, I think we're in an interesting position. So if you go back a month ago, we sat here and we talked about how confident Chair Powell was and how comfortable he felt about where the Fed was. We take the actions that happened over the last month, and it's understandable the chair is not nearly as comfortable or as confident as he was. And we're almost getting to a point right now where he's outsourcing monetary policy. He's outsourcing it by saying, look, based on what I see, and he's got very good data on what's going on in these small regional banks and medium-sized banks, but what I see on deposits leaving these banks, I don't believe they're going to be able to loan money or as much money, and therefore we're going to see a natural contraction in the economy. That natural contraction, and he basically said this, is probably another 25 basis points of tightening or maybe even more. So now we've got the Fed doing what they're doing with their 25. We've got the banking community contracting the economy because they no longer have enormous excess deposits to recirculate back into the economy. So he's in this situation where he has to make that assumption that that's going to happen. And that's why I think he left himself in this position. We'll see what happens. Which you think was appropriate. I think it was totally appropriate. So you were a soft landing guy. Did you throw that out the window? I think soft land. I have been a soft landing guy. I won't. I, I won't back off. I think it's getting harder. You know, now that the Fed has lost control, it is more difficult. When the Fed was in control of slowing down the economy by raising rates and just making it more expensive, I felt like we could maneuver a soft landing. Now that we're just taking money out of the system and we're con and we're really taking loan availability away, it's not loan availability at any cost. It's just loan availability. Yep. is gone, I think the ability to soft land gets more difficult. And your view is not based on another cascade of failures or anything like that. It's just the current conditions, if they prevail yeah. as of right now, given what we've seen in terms of deposit flows. Yeah, I, I, I think the Fed has very good data, and I think they're seeing enormous amount of deposit flow from the medium-sized banks into the very large banks. Um, and, and so when seeing that, they know what that means for small, medium-sized businesses around the country. That means that loan creation is going to slow down very dramatically in this country. Is it a systemic risk, though, at all? Or is it a risk, at least, for regional and smaller banks that do provide so much of that capital? I wouldn't call it systemic. I think it's a, it's a real shock to economic growth. Because when you take loan availability out of the system, if you're a, a middle-sized business person in the middle of the country and you were planning on buying another piece of equipment to make yourself bigger and more efficient, you no longer have that ability to borrow that money. You're sort of stuck at the level of production you're at. You're not going to hire that incremental worker. You're not going to borrow that incremental money. You're, you're going to stay at a static level. So it is a slowing of the economy by naturally not having the ability to borrow the money. So do you think that the Fed will be cutting this year? I, I look at the dot plot, and I know you guys have been talking dot about the dot plot. The dot plot shows cutting in 24. The dot plot shows pretty dramatic cutting in 24, 25, and, and longer. You know, but it, not in 23. Not in 23. The market shows 23. I, I, again, I, I think that the, the Fed is going to sort of stay here as long as they can. My view is they want to stay here as long as they can, because the worst mistake they can make is to cut and then have to, to raise again. So they're better off to stay an extra, an extra month or two than have cut right. and then say, oh, my God. They've we said that. Cut. Yeah. So but, I, but, the, but then the question is, what happens to inflation? Look, they're, 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 their goal is to fight inflation. You know, they have their dual mandate is to fight the inflation. We've seen all the central bankers around the world declare the same goal. Our goal is to fight inflation. We are going to use monetary policy. We are going to use interest rates to fight inflation. We understand what's going on potentially in banking. We understand the negative implications to banks' portfolios by raising rates. We still have a mandate to fight inflation, and we're going to use our tools. I think Powell declared that yesterday, and we've seen other central banks around the world equally declare that.